Hey guys, it's at number two. So we're in Mormon chapter eight, specifically here, verses one to eleven. Before Mormon, before Morono goes on to talk about other things, um, before he talks about all the good stuff, he finishes off. He has a permission to grieve, a permission to mourn. He picks up after his father's death. He doesn't say a lot about it. He kind of just says, "Well, this sort of happened," and I don't, I know not. He uses the word "I know not" alone, uh, a, a lot. Sorry, he's alone, and I know not. And we can use that too. We don't know. There's a lot of things we don't know. Um, he says in verse 1, Behold, I'm Rona, I do finish the record of my father Mormon. Behold, I have but few things to write, which things I have been commanded by my father. As in, I think, for me, I believe for Moroni, and even for Mormon, it was so tragic and so awful to see their people destroyed, their family destroyed, to continue to run and be fugitives. And Moroni is facing however many years as a fugitive he's like I, I don't know mm. he says that in um, verse 5 um, behold my father hath made this record and he hath written the intent thereof and behold I would write if it also if I had room upon the plates but I have not and all I have none for I am alone my father hath slain, been slain in battle that's all we know about it was that he was slain in battle and remember uh, Mormon wrote down when there were 24 of them left so there must have been some sort of final battle or they must have caught up to him Moroni escaped, Mormon did not um, and all my kinsfolk and I have not friends nor whither to go and how long the Lord will suffer that I may live I know not so he doesn't know how long he's going to be wandering it ends up being about 40 years um, he doesn't really know that Here yeah, he's he says, my father also was killed by them, and I remain alone. This is verse 3, to tell the sad tale of their destruction. And he goes, and, and you know, whether they will slay me, I know not. He says several times over, I know not, I know not. Things that I don't know. And then he picks up, which we're doing in site number 3, other things he does know. So, <clears throat> as Mona picks up after his father's death, he says several things of which he knows not. Then he states his purpose and mission, which starts in, like, 10, I think. Um, yeah, verse 10, he gives strong testimony of things he does know. He starts off there, so let's just cover, oh, we'll cover, cover that in next insight. Um, but basically, and there are none that do know the true God, save it be the disciples of Jesus, who did tarry in the land. He talks about them and how they departed. And then in the good news in verse 11, which we'll get to in the next insight, is that, but he's seen them and they've ministered to both him and his father. So, to the righteous, angels come, you know. Um, visitations happen even today so he gives strong testimony of things he knows however before we go there right before we go there how does this show that we can keep our covenants commandments and commitments even and well and especially in the space of the I know not moments because I don't know how long I'm going to be living here um, and doing what the Lord would have me do I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow specifically. I, I'm not even sure what's going to happen in the next half hour. I remember when I was just talking the other day about when COVID shutdown happened here in New Zealand. I was in the supermarket. I was not listening to the news. I was kind of oblivious to the fact that it happened. Other than within 30 minutes, the supermarket's now packed full of people. I'm starting to have a panic attack because I go shopping on a Monday morning when it's generally pretty quiet. Um, and I had to go hide out in a cheese shop that's nearby because it was just I couldn't even get out the car park I packed my groceries away and I thought oh I should have got more of this more of this but I ain't going back into that circus that's a nightmare so we don't know what's going to happen and there's so much that we don't know you know I don't know this and I don't know that and he states that over and over I don't know I don't know if they'll kill me I don't know how long I'll be here um you know I, I just I know not I don't know and we all have those I don't know moments. We can put Moroni in this pedestal and we know that he's this great prophet, warrior, leader, angel to the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. However, he's admitting here, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And President Nelson would tell us the same thing. I don't know about that. I don't know how I'm going to live here. I don't know what that's going to happen. I don't know what's happening tomorrow. But those are the things I do know. And... He goes on to talk about, even though I remain alone, Christ is real, gospel is true, here's the things you need to do. So there's a whole lot of things in there. So how do we do that? We, how can we learn from this how to keep our, as I said, covenants, commandments and commitments 
even in the I don't know moments. Um, and how can we or how do you accomplish this when there is so much that we just don't know? Because it can get kind of frustrating and I will stamp my foot and go, I just if I could just know just this much more, I could plan better for it. But we don't know. So what do we do? We do what we can do today. Plan as best as we can for tomorrow, but continue to have that relationship with Christ so that we can get that Holy Ghost talking to us so that we know when these things change or what the next thing is to do, even in an emergency moment. Um, and going back to that COVID moment, I was able to stop at a different supermarket that wasn't quite as busy. I was able to pick up some extra things for ourselves, but also grab some stuff that um, some elderly friends of ours that I had. And I managed to get her on the phone. Um, it took like half an hour to be able to get a call through just to see if there's anything she wanted and to tell her that she can't go out. And she's like, oh, we'll have to... I'll have to do that. I said, no, you won't, you won't be going to the doctors tomorrow. You won't be doing this. <laughs> there's, there's no going out right now. And it was a hard concept for her to like figure, but I was able to talk to her. I knew I didn't have COVID. I knew she didn't, so I was able to drop stuff off at their home, talk to both of them about it, settle them down, and then they were able to figure it out from there. But like, there's just things that I just immediately thought they won't get it you know and, and I'm sure a lot of us reached out to people and we helped our neighbors through that time but you know there's there's things that we can do in those panic emergency moments we're led by the Holy Ghost as to what to do and I knew I had to call her and ask her that was one of the things I had to do to try and get hold of my other members of my family and see how they were situated and um, we had to talk about how we were going to isolate in, in our like spaces and yeah, I also went to the bookshop and got some stuff to do in case it was raining, you know. <laughs> so I can go out for a walk, but yeah, there was all sorts of rules we had to learn and it was an emergency thing. Um, but because we had already been mostly prepared, that wasn't too bad because we had followed the Holy Ghost for preparing a whole bunch of stuff for keeping meds and um, first aid supplies and store cupboard full of food a ton of toilet paper which people used to mock me about and now they never do um, so things like that because they had followed that already so how do we accomplish that when there's so much we don't know we live in relationship with Christ so that we can follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost and know what it is we need to do so that when those things happen we've already prepared yeah anyway well as best we can right Okay, well that's that one. There's a lot you don't know, but it's actually okay. You can have those grief moments. You can say, I don't know, and then you can still move forward with Christ. And Marona showed us how. All right, let's look at verses 10 through 16. We'll do that in the next one. I'll see you there.